you're looking at Paul Revere's first house. This is in its original structure, built in 1680, but he did not buy it until 1770. Coincidentally, the brick house next door is the Hitchborn house. His father's wife was a Hitchborn, and those were his in-laws, and they shared a common garden. Now, Paul, as you know, was a great silversmith and goldsmith, but that was his artistic side. Overall, Paul had over 14 different careers, including many industrial and many valid services to the U.S. Navy. From his silversmith tools, he developed a way to make copper thin and use in military endeavors such as the plating of the first seven U.S. Navy frigates. Now, copper plating a frigate was a technique only the British knew, and they used it to keep the ship out on the water longer to prevent urchins and other seaweed from grappling into wood eating away at the wood and slowing the ship in maneuvers. So if you were about to take on the British Navy, you better copper plate your ships. From there he went into producing cannons for all purposes, of all sizes, and eventually made gunpowder from his techniques, and then semi-retired to the health issues of Boston. He became a coroner of Boston, one of three, and for five years he conducted inquests of unexplained, unexpected deaths. And his inquests are available at the Mass Historical Society or the Massachusetts Archives, and they're very interesting to read on the life and times of Paul Revere. From here, he moved to Canton, Massachusetts to take advantage of the river out there that produced energy for him, and he built a foundry in which he made church bells. By the time he was done, they had produced over 400 different church bells, some ship bells, and some bells used in plantation fields in Cuba. To this day, his most distant bell resides in Indonesia and Singapore, and is in their museum out there. Uh, there are, at best guess right now, at least 180 of his bells still in service at churches all across the country, far away as Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and California.